If you've seen the hit reality show, Duck Dynasty, then you know what millions already do. I'm fixing to go crazy, redneck, up in here. While times are good now for the Robertson clan, life wasn't always happy, 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 happy. Phil and Miss Kay married young. Life was tough in those early days, not just because they were poor. He wasn't just away from the Lord, he was just horribly away, and so he did a bunch of horrible things that were just terrible, and you know, for my mom to stick with him through all that was incredible. When Doug Dynasty first aired in 2012, producers wanted to tone down the family's faith. Miss Kay, listen to this. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 7 about marriage. But that's exactly what the audience wanted. The season three finale broke an A&E channel record with 9.6 million viewers. Please welcome to the 700 Club, the patriarch and the matriarch of the Duck Dynasty clan, Phil and Kay Robertson. It's great to have you both with us. Nice to be so here. So are you kin to our Robertsons? They, they have, when I, when I came up here, someone, I, I was wondered about that. And they said, look, we all came from Scotland. So it's all the kin folks go. gathering so, up here today. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Robertsons have come back together up here in Virginia. There. <laughs> And they, many of the Robertsons like to duck hunt. So I have with me, Phil, duck, a duck collar. Now, I have no clue. I am clueless how to use this. What do I do? Well, uh, you turn it to the other this end. Way. To start this way. Well, see, that's my problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm taking see, this in. I'm looking at that particular model. Uh, now, look. Oh, you he will. had to show you all of his special duck yeah. collar. See, I'm, I'm learning as I go further north. I'm up in old Virginia now, but uh, I'm learning that where we're from, uh, women pick ducks, you know. Miss Case picked a lot of her ducks, but now you're interested in duck calling. Pioneer which woman. Oh. You're, you're sort of breaking out here today. I am. Now look, we have all these different kinds of ducks. This is about like six different species of duck. And uh, basically what all this comes down to is, is the control of your tongue. Oh dear. Your tongue. <laughs> okay. So watch. What you're saying, this is the way you hold one. Hold it between your thumb and index finger like that. And uh, so tongue control. Now look, if you say O O O, your tongue stays on the on the bottom. It's, it doesn't come up. Uh-huh. O O O. Just o, say O. 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 Your tongue mm -hmm. didn't move. It's behind my teeth. But right. if you say ten, 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 ten. You notice your tongue comes up mm -hmm. and actually hits the roof of your mouth. So with a duck call, you're, you're basically going 10, 10, 10. 10, 10, Well, 10. maybe. Let's see. Did you, did you put your lips right up like? That's, put okay. it, go ahead, go ahead and word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the Old Wisconsin Virginia has version, a long right? way to go. See, I think when a southerner says 10, 10, 10, it's different than when a northerner says 10, well, 10, 10. 10. <laughs> So look, now see that's your like your uh, a hen duck is calling on another one. But if they're like they're eating, they'll go. Now that's the mallard. Now listen to this. Here's three ducks. Here's a teal. Listen, that's all they do. Really? You could probably peep. do that. And this is a ball pate or a widgeon. Listen. And look, this is a pintail. That's cool. I love that. So that's three ducks right there. Here's the old green head, the old mallard drake. Now the hen, this is the hen. <laughs> and the mallard drake is like this. <laughs> Sounds like a frog. Yep. That's all the men need to say. <laughs> this, is a, this is a wood duck. <laughs> that's a wood duck. I had no idea they were so different. Oh. How many do you have? How many have you designed all together? Through uh, the years, this is like uh, 35 or 40 years of work. Wow. To, it's like playing piano by ear. What'd you say? Jason has even come up with new ones since really Phil kind of semi-retired from building the duck calls. So these are Phil's collection, and Jason has his own collection. That is amazing. And Isn't here's a right? little, he, yeah, and here's a little, little, the, the, the female uh, teal, the, other, the male is like, but the female is like, it's a little quick. In that You're place. right. You're right, Kay. Well, I don't want you to hit noise. your duck call one more lick. Let me hear your duck call one more time okay. because 
That was so thrilling to hear you learn <laughs> how here. Okay. Well, that's kind of like kind of like a duck caught in a in a, in a trap. <laughs> 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 what can I? I'll work on it, Phil, for our next get together. So, when you started designing these, and when they came to you and said, "We want to do a show about your family," did you have any idea it would become the top-rated reality show on cable? I said, "Will there be any hunting in it?" And they they said, "Oh no, Mr. Robson, you know we wouldn't." We wouldn't want to do that. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I figured. So I'm thinking, you know, L.A., Los Angeles is coming in here. They're going to film a bunch of yeah, rednecks. Tell them how positive you were. Oh, look, I said, let me get this right. A <coughs> bunch of rednecks <coughs> hunting ducks. I said, but you don't want to see any of them actually get shot. I said, do y'all really think this will work? And then they informed me. They said, well, Ozzy Osbourne made it. And I'm like, you know, there's hope for us all. <laughs> <laughs> and then the boys were so glad to come out and say, Dad, were you right? Yes, wow. I didn't think well, it would work, but, but... But tell them the rest of what you said. You said it would only work if... What I said was, they said, Dad, what do you think? And I said, this won't work. However, I said, if God is behind it, yeah. it'll go all the way to the top. So I did have a little, little disclaimer. I said, now, if he's behind this... I said, no telling where to go. So, so I think that's what it's all I about. I think that's what it's all about, too. Yeah. What is it, do you think, that draws people to your family and to the values that you share? Can I talk with you? Sure. That was, so, that was so nice of you. She's like Sarah <laughs> Abraham. She yes. is the epitome of Sarah. She you waits on me hand. Like and she, she is a great She's right, woman. But that's okay. Um, <laughs> I think is what they tell me, because we go all over the country now, mm -hmm. and they always say, y'all are so real. Yeah. You are, we can relate to y'all. Um, you, seem, you seem so sincere, and you really are. And they'll just, it's like somebody they can identify with. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what they tell me. And you're, you have been very honest on air. You're certainly very honest in your book, Happy, 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 you talk about, I mean, it hasn't always been sunshine and roses. That's correct. You guys have been married 50 years? Almost. Almost, almost 50 years? Yeah, Why? and it, it, we had some, it was actually about 10 years that were really, really, really tough, tough, tough very times. Tough. How did that turn around for you? Well, uh, I was in a beer joint and a preacher came in with a Bible and I'm like, and my, my little sister is up in the front handing out tracts, you know, that religious really tracts. And they started kind of, some of the old guys, you know, drinking beer, you know, and they started romping on her a little bit. So I walked her to the front and I said, listen, my little sister is one of these holy roller types and she's <laughs> passing out tracts. Leave her alone or I'll break your legs. <laughs> And he really meant it. I said, it. Just, let her, <laughs> that time. just let her do her thing, you know. So the, so the first initial meeting, I pretty well ran the guy out of there. And, and you uh, did my run the guy Yeah, my there. sister told me later, she said when, when the preacher got outside, he looked around at her and he said, I don't think he's ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what started it. And then, you know, my life was spiraling out of control in a hurry. You have to remember, we're talking the 60s here, sex, drugs, rock and roll, just let her rip. So I finally came to my senses. Miss Kay was after me. She said, look, just sit down and listen. Mm -hmm. Well, just listen. He, he started a little early. What he did was, he didn't tell you this part because it is embarrassing. Uh, he put us out of the house, yeah. me and the three boys I had at the time, because he said we were too goody-goody and Holy Roller and a few other things. Because the Lord had started to work in your life at that time. Oh, I had found the Lord by that time. It was about a year ahead of him. She was uh -huh. converted first. Uh huh. Yeah, and that's a long story. We don't have time for now, it. But. Kay, when that happened, when, when Phil said, you guys need to get out, you're too goody-goody, did you see God's hand at work at that point, or did you well, feel here's desperate? The deal. What were you feeling? If anybody reads about or hears my story, uh, they would know that what kept me there, I think, for so long was the fact that I was raised more by my grandmother than my parents. And her words were always to me about, well, of course, she always talked about one man, mm -hmm. one wife, or one life. 
which I, you know, I, I, she would just teach me things like that real while we were shelling peas or shucking corn or something like that or cooking, rolling dough. And then she said, and you'll have to fight for your marriage. Well, I just thought that's ridiculous because number one, when I get married, it's going to be, we're going to live happily ever we after. All like that, don't we? <laughs> like the book says, all the books you read, they say that. And so it was like I finally found out what she was talking about. But she said, your marriage, no matter what you think or what people tell you, it's worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, so I wanted to look in the sky and tell my grandmother at that point, okay, he kicked me out. I didn't leave. <laughs> Can I be done now? <laughs> yeah. And with the separation time, it was uh, really hard. But we, because I was a Christian then, and where I went is where we worship now. And uh, and I had so many people praying for him. And his sister who had come to the beer joint and all that, she had prayed him, her and her mother for three years prior wow. to that for his salvation. You didn't really have a, have a chance there, my friend. So <laughs> when he came that day to my work, yes. and he hates for me to tell this, but it was the truth. He just came there. And I thought, well, he's come up here and he's drunk and passed out on the steering wheel because his head, but it wasn't when he raised his head up and I opened the door. I didn't know if he was going to shoot me or, you know, what would happen. But he looked up and he had big tears mm -hmm. in his eyes and he said, I can't eat. I can't sleep. I want my family back. Yeah. And, you know, then I thought, oh, he's just like I want him. Yeah. But I knew, I said, he said, I'm never going to drink again. And I said, you can't do it by yourself. Yeah. And I found myself being stronger because God was telling me, you got to stand up here. You know, as I read your book, Phil, I was thinking the person that you were before you knew Christ and the person that Miss Kay is describing is so different than you are today. I don't even know you well, but just watching you on your program, reading your book, you're a gentle man. It's, it's uh, literally, it's literally what Jesus said from darkness too light. Yes. By the way, now Miss K, I said to Miss K, now when uh, uh, you're not going to run out on me one of these days, are you? And she said, Phil, she said, listen to my voice. She said, I stayed with you when you were mean and we were poor. She said, now you're kind and we're rich. Number one, rich is better, and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> He loves to tell that. He loves to tell that story. She said, well, I used to have to pay all the bills, you know. But yeah, I, mean, I was like the one that had to worry about all that stuff, you know. But can, let me ask you this, because you have you have been in a place of need. God has blessed you mightily as you've given him glory over the years. But a lot of people who come to success really get off the beaten path. I mean, their lives change. They become managed and ruled by other people who don't share their values. How do you, how do you stay real in the middle of that? Look, when you get right down to it, we're talking about the rarest of commodities when you come to Jesus. Peace of mind. All your sins removed. None of your future ones counted against you if you just trust God and try. And at the end, the resurrection of the dead. When you, when you really look at it, you say, uh, let's see, uh, can fame or money top mm -hmm. the resurrection yeah. of the bodies from the earth? I'm like, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> so it's the old, look at what's out there, our living hope, Jesus. And you say, you know what? Listen, I ran without Jesus for the first 28 years. And I've run with Jesus for the last 38. Trust me, the last 38 have been far better. Mm -hmm. Our first year down on the river, when I went down there, I had a clear head. When I was converted, I said, okay, here we go. <sighs> so I said, let's see, I could teach school. Most people don't know this, but I, I earned a master's degree in Louisiana Tech in education. So I could have taught school, but I said, Miss Kay, find a place on the river. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to fish nets in the river and I can, I can beat teaching school for his money, just fishing on the river. And I said, and while I'm doing that, I said, you see this duck call? I said, there's not but one of them on this earth. I said, I'm going to patent this thing and we'll go in the duck call business. Well, the first year in the duck call business, our gross sales was $8,000. And tell I, my words. I said, Miss Kay, we are rolling. 
And I said, we're going to starve to death. <laughs> but she held the line and stayed the course. And it started out the next year was 13.5. And then it was like 22, the sales. And then it was like 37. And look, today, millions. No worries. Millions. Yeah. So, yeah. Doing something you love. It was either a tremendous stroke of luck. <laughs> Or the Almighty said, I'll fill your barns up, yeah. tamp down and running over. So, But here's what I think that, ca that tries to keep us on track is the fact that I've said all along, we never forget where we came from. Amen. And if something happened tomorrow with devastation, we went back to, you know, the shaggy trailer that we lived in one time, we would it wouldn't fine. matter. We would just no be problem. fine. Yeah. And another thing we do, and this is really neat, my older son, Alan, who hasn't come to the show, but will this year, uh, we do a thing with him. It, it was kind of our, uh, I don't know, maybe his and um, probably his idea first. And then everybody said it was good that we would have meetings ever so often to bring our focus and make sure mm -hmm. it's back where we started. Wow. Back exactly where we started. And so that's been wonderful to do that. And... Uh, you know, that's what we really have. But I think for the sons, they know. But I worry more for the grandchildren yeah. because we have world. teens now that are even asked to go out and speak like we do that are on the road. And that's just, you know. Plus, they're now rich kids. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, you got to get them out in the boat, Phil. I'm telling you, <laughs> oh, I'm looking at them. I'm thinking, oh no, they're acting like yuppies. <laughs> okay. Well, we all love it. We love especially the time that your family gathers together at the end of each show and bows and prays. It's really a, a precious reminder of of how families are raised in our country and the values that most of us grew up You know, up they were with. taking out in the show when I would pray in the name of Jesus, amen, they were taking in the name of Jesus, they cut that out. In Jesus' name, they cut that out. So I asked them why, and uh, the production crew, and they said, well, uh, we wouldn't want to offend anybody else or anything. You know, I said, well, I understand. I said, but you know, it is, you would agree, 2013 A.D., Anno Domini, year of our Lord. <laughs> I said, so you're counting time by Jesus, and I'm counting. Our calendars are based on him. I said, you know, of all the individuals who ever walked on planet Earth, if we count time, document time by just one of them, Jesus. I said, I don't think it would hurt to throw his name in. Yeah. So look, they said, well, you know, we'll think about that. Well, that supper scene was right after that. So I, I put the food down in the middle of the table, and all the cameras are on me. So I sat down, they said, Mr. Robinson, you ready to offer the prayer? So you cameras are rolling now and action. And I bowed my head and I said, Father, thank you for the good food that you bless us with. Thank you for our children. Thank you, Father, for loving us and saving us. And Father, I do pray that you will give these people that are filming us time to repent before you burn them <laughs> for not using your name in a prayer. He did, <laughs> but I looked up, I looked up and their eyes were like, I said, hey, put he that really on TV. Did that. <laughs> I'm here to verify that was all true. You do have a way of putting it all right oh. there, you know? <laughs> they said, Mr. Robinson, would you pray again and maybe tone it down a little bit? <laughs> I Keep us out of it. <laughs> That's right. That really happened. The book is just so much fun because but we I'll love you and your family so much. And it's given us a new insight mm. into who God is in your life and the journey he's had you on. It's been a, a fascinating journey. You've only seen a little bit of, of it if you've watched the show. The book is called Happy, 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 My Life and Legacy as the Duck Commander. It's available wherever books are sold. And also we want to remind you to watch Duck Dynasty. That's on A&E. Just check your local listings for dates and times. Want to say also that your son, Alan, you said, is going to be joining you in the yep. new season. He's the one without whiskers. Really? A duck dynasty guy see, without whiskers? See, he, he got caught up in the old trap that the reason God gave males whiskers and he, he didn't give females. See, look, here's Miss K. <laughs> there's your face. No whiskers. But hey. he gave us whiskers. And what do we do? We turn around and scrape them off every day. I'm like, why <laughs> would you do that? What do you say that? about he, he's the only people that have... Well, there are two kinds of people on planet Earth who do not, ha do not have beards. That would be women and youth. I am neither. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're like.
life is very entertaining with, with this hey, guy. Hey, the United <laughs> States of America needs a big dose of manhood. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> the big draws of you know, Duck Dynasty. You know, little geeky guys. <laughs> I'm like, okay. grow you some whiskers, son. Get out a little bit. <laughs> I think we're going to see a whole new revolution. We'll be it's back with... It's never a dull moment with, in I my house. I am sure that's true. Or you with him. <laughs> that's why you make such a great it's couple. Sarah. <laughs> we're going to be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Happy, happy, happy. Go get it. <laughs>